Hey everyone and welcome to another uh, Disney Photography Blog Lightroom tutorial. Uh, Corey here, I'm going to walk you through a, a shot I have here from Buena Vista Street out at the newly redesigned Disney California Adventure. Um, in my opinion, uh, this is not a very interesting shot by any means, um, but the main purpose of this tutorial is to show you how I can convert a color image to black and white using Lightroom. Um, that said, just a couple quick things. This was taken with the uh, 5D Mark III with the Canon 50mm f1.4, uh, one of my favorite lenses to use. Uh, great bargain, only a couple hundred bucks. It's not going to break your bank like some of the L lenses will. Um, this old car is out front of Oswald's uh, gas station right as you walk onto Buena Vista Street. Uh, I love old school hood ornaments on cars. I think they're, they're very interesting. Um, so I decided to try to go with a shot here. It's some really shallow depth of field. If you've ever, you know, watched uh, any of my other videos, you've seen some landscape shots. Uh, one of my other favorite things to do is go in and completely blur out that background. So this is what we did here. Um, if you look in at the focus on the on the hood ornament, not exactly the sharpest, but we'll, we'll go ahead and try to fix that to the best of our capabilities in just a few minutes. Uh, one thing we're going to do first see some serious uh, color fringing here. I know we're going to convert to black and white, but that stuff really bothers me. So right over here in lens corrections, we're going to go into uh, color and we are going to just defringe a little tiny bit and get rid of some of that. Take it down to about 10. Pretty much all that purple goes away, which I like. It's a little bit cleaner now. So the first thing I like to do is uh, all the way over the top, I just go ahead and I click on black and white. And it's going to eliminate all the color in the image, uh, but it's still a relatively flat um, raw image. I shoot always in raw uh, just so I can get the most out of my files. Um, other people feel differently, that's that's completely fine by, by me. Uh, I prefer to shoot in raw. So uh, a couple things I do differently when I do black and white. I, uh, I like to go ahead and I'll push the exposure up quite a bit actually. Um, I think that helps, makes it feel nice and bright. It was a nice, bright, sunny day, California Adventure, so I want to mimic that to the best of my ability. Um, and I feel like when you do black and white, you have a little bit more leeway with how far you can go with uh, some of the sliders in Lightroom. I, I've spoken in earlier videos about how um, pulling highlights down too far, or shadows up too high can do some damage in a color image. I don't think that's necessarily the case in black and white. So if you see here, if I come way down on the highlights here, you know, I'm already out at, you know, minus 46. It didn't really do a ton of damage as compared to what that could have done to a color. It just kind of cools off some of the, uh, the hot spots a little bit. Same thing with shadows. I like to go pretty good, bring out the, uh, the shadows quite a bit. It introduces a little bit of noise into the frame, but since we're not done yet, it's not really a big deal. Um, one of the things I, I always like to do to all my photos is increase the blacks. Uh, I do it even more in black and white photos. I like really deep, rich blacks. That's how I personally feel a black and white photo should look. So I'm going to drop this one down all the way into the, into the 60s, which is somewhere I usually never, ever go uh, with a color image. So, and then another thing is contrast. I usually go, you know, maybe 30, 40 on a color image. Black and white, we're going to push that a little bit further, maybe into the 60s also. Um, so you're starting to get a, a really deep sense of black over here, um, you know, very, very pronounced, very inky. Uh, so then we're going to go over to clarity, and I, I've said in other videos that I, I tend not to go over a certain amount in clarity. Uh, again, with black and white, I'll push it a little bit further. So I go up to, you know, maybe 45 or so. Um, I think it just helps the photo pop quite a bit, um, and, and I, I like the way it, it renders in black and white. In, in color, it can push that uh, clown barfish HDR that we've talked about on our podcast before, uh, and we don't want that. So um, we're getting pretty close here. Um, I'm not going to touch anything here in the color mix. I usually just leave that be. Uh, every once in a while, I'll make some slight adjustments to that, but usually it's never a, an issue. I also never really change the white balance when I do black and whites either. Uh, so we're going to go into sharpening. Uh, and for this hood ornament that's relatively soft, we're going to go ahead and put the sharpening pretty high. We're going to go up to somewhere in the high 90s, almost to 100. 
we're going to see what that does to that. Uh, but since we're also dealing with an image that has a very blurred out background, we don't want that stuff to be sharpened. So we're going to mask by uh, holding down our Alt or Option key, like we talked about in some other videos. And we're going to pull this all the way up. Um, so pretty much only the hood ornament is, is what's getting the, the sharpening. Um, it's starting to look pretty nice for a, for a black and white, in my opinion. Um, and the last thing I like to do, black and white, I like to put like a nice heavy vignette on uh, this leans a little bit into the the artsy side of things but I do like the way it looks uh, it's pretty pretty artistic pretty creative in my opinion um, and then the midpoint yeah y'all you know, just I don't want to bring it too far down you bring it too far down it, it looks like a like a pinhole camera and you don't want that so I usually leave it in the somewhere in the 60s uh, for most images so from there that's that's pretty much a completed image uh, Sometimes I might go into Photoshop and adjust in one of the color effects panels, uh, but for this one I think it's pretty good. So if we look at the uh, the beginning image with all that ugly purple fringing uh, from the bright light and the wide open aperture, um, distracting highlights here, um, just nothing really that special. And if I go back to what this look came out like, I'm pretty happy with the way that looked. So. Uh, this is a quick way. That's pretty much how I do all my black and white photos. Um, but feel free to experiment. That's the beauty of Lightroom, beauty of photography, is that you're your own artist. And you get to make your own creative decisions, which I fully endorse. Um, so that's that's pretty much it for this photo. Um, thanks thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to check out the blog, DisneyPhotographyBlog.com, for uh, daily Disney photos, Lightroom videos, gear reviews, all sorts of good stuff. Also, make sure to uh, to check out the podcast, ISO 5571, uh, where you can listen to myself, Ryan Pastorino, and Tom Bricker uh, go on and on and on about photography, Duffy, Mater, uh, and some other snarky comments. Um, also, if you could take a look at the Amazon links on our website, uh, go ahead and click those if you're an Amazon shopper, because uh, anything that you buy after clicking will help support the site and keep us running, which we would greatly appreciate. Um, so once again, this is Corey from DisneyPhotographyBlog.com. See you next time.